Welcome back to Realms Remembered. This is Michael T. Bradley. Hey everybody, I hope you're doing well out there. I know it's been forever and uh, most of you probably, like me, thought that I wasn't going to continue with this series, but <laughs> intrepid believers, we are going to move forward. I have tried uh, throughout this more and more to try to get it to be less autobiographical and more just about the books, but now and then it, it seems kind of uh, inevitably to lend itself that way. Just a super quick explanation of why this series in particular and the channel overall have gone quiet uh, mostly for the last year. Um, two things. One, the kind of negative is that towards the end of last year, my back was healed enough so that they um, cleared me for full time back at work. So for whatever reason, about six hours a day still feels decent to me and I can do that. Not really any big problem, but when you push that to eight hours a day, I am just exhausted when I get home and I just don't have energy for most things. And it's been very difficult picking myself up from that point. The kind of more positive side of things is that I have been using my time where I do feel good. Uh, I've been, um, and it's become less frequent as well, but I'm sure most of you know about the Faroon History Channel that I'm helping out with. I'm one of the uh, major voices over there. That's been a lot of fun. I'm sure that a lot of you listening probably have subscribed because of that. It's weird, even though I don't have content coming out, I've seen a lot of new subscriptions. Thanks, guys. I hope you're enjoying what the channel has, uh, even though there hasn't been much new. And so I've been doing that, and I've also been doing uh, more audiobook work. I kind of stopped for a year and a half there doing the audiobook work. That's been really rewarding because I got very lucky and was able to do, so far, a couple of books by a writer I both know and enjoy, and that's kind of led me to some larger projects as well. For now, let's go ahead and jump into the books. Now, it has been over a year, at least, since I have read these books, I'm sure. Uh, if you look on Goodreads, I would have rated them when I finish them. I, I rate them. I don't write reviews for them on Goodreads when I read this stuff. So if you're following me on Goodreads, gordoncole at gmail.com, then awesome. And if not, feel free to uh, jump in and be my friend and give me recommendations and yada, yada, yada. Yeah, for, for a few reasons, I wanted to start this up again. I should say this, you know, one, <laughs> I waited too damn long and it looks like the fiction for Forgotten Realms is going to start up again, even if it's only Salvatore at this point. That's all I've seen reported on. And I don't have any interest in that, but I know a lot of you guys are big Salvatore fans, and a lot, a lot, a lot of people are Salvatore fans. So, you know, I think that's awesome. So like I say, it's been over a year since I've read these. I'm not going to have a lot to say, but I, I did think of something that I could talk about here um, as, a, as a bigger thing at the end. 1479, Elminster Enraged. I honestly don't remember anything about this. I know that the past one or two Elminster books, I had at least kind of made some headway in before sort of giving up. This one, I don't remember making any headway in. It's just all a blank to me. So that kind of sucks. Next up, Sandstorm by Christopher Rowe, possibly Christopher R. Rowe, and this is a uh, first-time Realms author, as far as I know, unless there was a short story that I missed. Uh, this was probably my favorite out of the three in this bunch. It's a strange story. I have assumed from the title Sandstorm that this would be something that takes place in the desert and is a, you know, a desert-oriented tale. It's not really a desert story. There's some stuff in the desert here and there, but Sandstorm is actually the nickname given to the main character in the gladiatorial pits. In my memory, I get this book mixed up with the Warhammer 40k book Hammer of Demons uh, by Ben Counter, because it also involved the main character getting thrown into gladiatorial pits, so I think that one had a, a lot more <laughs> flensing and uh, blood being thrown around than this one, but who knows? Uh, I could be wrong. I enjoyed this book for about the first hundred or so pages, then it just felt like it got really unfocused, I guess, which is not necessarily a bad thing, 
but I just kept finding myself asking, like, where the hell is this going? I think lineage came into play a lot, and I just didn't care enough about any of the characters to give a damn. I remember one of the circus, uh, because it, it, it's like it starts out with Sandstorm in gladiatorial combat, and then he's kind of rescued, and he goes and joins the circus. It, it, I, I know that sounds crazy, but I'm pretty sure that's the plot. Uh, which gave it kind of a fun little Ray Bradbury feel, I thought. Maybe kind of a stretch there, but I, I swear remembering that it kind of felt like that. One of the characters I really enjoyed was a Kenku. I think he ran the circus. And seeing a Kenku was fun because you don't see them very often and seeing him do his little mimicking stuff now and then I enjoyed. That's not really saying anything about the plot, and I apologize, but that's kind of what I remember about it. So, yeah, you know, like, a, hey, it's probably worth reading. That's my <laughs> review overall, I guess. Eh. 1480, Circle of Skulls by James P. Davis. I know I was really excited when I started reading this because... I haven't liked any James P. Davis in the past, and I thought this one would really, like, work for me. It seemed to be kind of clicking at first. It's about this, I believe, a diva who is, like, uh, on this revenge quest against this uh, demon or something, whatever, right? It seems like demons are popping up a lot in 4th edition, and all these different races are popping up in 4th edition, and I find that really cool. I like the different races, and I enjoy them. And, and so I liked that aspect of it, and I love revenge stories, but my problem was, after about 30 pages, I enjoyed it, then, and, and it, like, ends with, like, him going to a murder, and in this dark alley, there's, oh, it's the heads of the, the circle of skulls that represents the demons he's looking for, and oh, he just doesn't quite get him. Then the next 30 pages copy paste the first 30 pages the next 30 pages copy paste the first 30 pages it just felt like it kind of reminded me of like uh, an old shitty 80s action show like i don't know simon and simon or something or oh you know like going back further the fugitive right something like the fugitive where it's like every three or four episodes it's like oh could this be the identity of the un the un one armed man the unarmed man the one armed man you know, I, I just felt like there was no plot progression, and so I vaguely recall that I skipped to the end thinking, okay, it's just going to keep going over and over and over again, it's going to be the same to the end, and I don't remember if I enjoyed the end or not, I'm sorry. This is a, a terrible <laughs> episode overall, so I beg your forgiveness, but... You know, I figured if I if I don't do it, then I'm never going to do it. So at least we've got something. Essentially, Sandstorm was the only one out of these three that I felt like I could say, hey, maybe you guys should, should read this. If anybody has any thoughts or comments or feedback on any of these, please feel free to comment. And let me know why you think I'm a moron and <laughs> why these books were actually amazing. So I do want to take a few moments here. Because otherwise, this would be a very short episode, and there's nothing wrong with that, but what the hell, let's pat it out. I do want to take a few moments. I did promise at some point that I would tell people why I thought 4E was amazing, and I know so few people liked it. So I will say, first off, that I absolutely agree that it was the worst marketed of any of the editions. It was terrible. It was absolutely terrible. The things that they said it would do and the things they promised it would do were either ridiculous, unnecessary, annoying, or never came to pass, so why the hell did they announce it? The way that they released the player's handbooks in like three or four parts so that you had to buy multiple expensive books just in order to get your basic classes was terrible, was stupid. Everything about that was horrible. Like the first year was basically... Me and everybody else saying, what the hell are you thinking, wizards? I didn't buy any of it at that point. I did, however, pick it up when Dark Sun came out, because I was like, man, as terrible as 4E might be, because all I had heard was bad stories, and yada, yada, yada. As terrible as it might be, it's gotta be easier to learn than 2nd Edition again, right? Because I had played 2nd Edition when I started. I started with Dark Sun. But I remember the character creation taking like 7 hours... <laughs> 
just being a grueling process, an unforgiving process. Non-weapon proficiencies, for God's sake. It was a mess, and uh, Thacko was still alive in those days, which, of course, is just the same goddamn thing as to hit. You just slide it on a scale, but whatever. Point being, I remember 2nd Edition being very, very difficult, and uh, as Dark Sun aficionado, I was very curious to see what they had done with it. And that discussion as to what they did with Dark Sun is a discussion for another day, because I have obviously lots of feels on that. But let's talk about 4th edition. Played it, and I was like, hey, this is awesome. Like, if you scrape away all the bullshit, this is an amazing system. Here's why I think so. One, a lot of people say, oh, they just tried to make it more like Magic, more like Warcraft. And I say, yes, yes, they did. And they did a great job of that. They brought in things like keywords. Um... Okay, honestly, all I remember at the moment is keywords, but I thought the keywords were a really good way of doing things. You had these keywords, and it's like, oh, okay, this interacts with this in that way, and it's not, you didn't have to spend like 20 minutes searching a rule book, like, well, this is kind of a scroll, but does that apply only to scrolls, or can it apply to rings, and yada, yada, yada. It was like, it has the keyword accessory. It's in blue. You know that that applies to all accessories. All of the things that they brought in from those other realms I really enjoyed because it's like, well, yeah, I mean, that just makes things simpler, requires less looking stuff up and uh, prolonging gameplay. And hopefully it will invite players who haven't done the tabletop pen and paper thing, who have only done the online thing or who have only done cards thing and it will get them interested because it's like, oh, I, I get how that works. Also, before I make my big argument about uh, what I think everybody misconstrued about 4th edition, I, I will say that Wizards just didn't know what the hell they had. Everything they came out with was just this, like, strategy map bullshit, and that was stupid. That was terrible. That was an absolute waste of the game. Yes, you could play things like that as, like, Here's a bar fight. Uh, let's let's put down the placemat and do the bar fight, and that's really our like encounter. Like they made it so that everything was like D and D encounters, which is set up in a specific way to have like three or four encounters during a night, two minor, one major, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Pathfinder Society is very very similar in the way that it's structured, and those are fine for league style games where you're collecting points and you're comparing things to each other and you all have a team and yada 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 absolutely horrible for an ongoing campaign it is not what you want and that's mostly what they came out with until like the last year when some people got it but let's talk about the system that they made everybody's big issue with fourth edition everybody's biggest issue that i've ever talked to is it's too simple every class feels like the other because every single thing that they can do has practically the same effect everything is these cards you know that's the way that they intend you to play right so that you have all these kind of cards on the table essentially and everything's cards and everybody essentially has a plus two in the end Yada, 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 my cleric feels the same as your paladin, or, well, that's bad, because they're so similar. My cleric feels essentially the same as your wizard in the long run, feels the same as the fighter, feels the same as the druid, yada, 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 yada. I say, you're right, and if you view that as a detriment, why are you role-playing? Because the thing that I think having a system like that allows for is that then you don't have to worry about rules anymore. Again, the thing that I hate the most about role-playing, and 2nd edition was the worst at this, 3rd edition was eh, still pretty bad at this. This is one of the reasons why I never really liked Pathfinder. I'm kind of getting into it more now, but... Um, now that they're going to a second edition of Pathfinder. But the thing that I hate the most is like, oh, for God's sake, how does Grapple work again? We're going to have to look it up again because there are just so many conditions and so many rules. When you know I have a one daily power that does a decent amount of damage and it's spelled out exactly on my card and it cannot change, I have a once per encounter power that does this, Yada, 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 and yeah, it's about the same, except for the flavor text, as everybody else. It's that flavor text that really starts to matter. 
and that flavor text that informs your character. And maybe you want to change that flavor text because really it's the only thing that you can change. And maybe you want to change how you portray your character and how he or she is seen by everyone else because that's the only thing that you can change. And you know what I'm talking about there? I'm talking about role-playing, not rules. The rules are simple and straightforward and by the numbers, no matter what class you're playing. You can play any class without having to relearn the skill set, without having to relearn the rule book. You just have to focus on role-playing. And that's why I love 4th edition. I think they made this incredible role-playing version of an action-adventure game. And nobody at Wizards noticed this until about the last damn year when they came out with stuff like the Neverwinter accessory. Oh my god, if you guys haven't read the Neverwinter book from 4th edition, check it out. It is amazing. That's the core of my argument. We could go into more details, I'm sure, but that's the basic core of it. One thing I will say is that I've been playing a lot of 5th edition in the past year, year and a half or so. And one thing that 5th edition has kept the same from 4th edition is that they've really only released these five or six core classes. And I, I will admit that now that I've been a player for a while, I've gone through like the three classes that really interest me. And one of the things that sucks is when you've only got these few core classes to choose from, yeah, it's the role-playing, or it's it's the little things that I add that make it feel like a different character and make me have fun with it, but I, I, I feel like I have a very limited pool to choose from, and so that might be some of the frustration that people felt with 4th edition when they said everything felt the same. I think it would have benefited from a lot more character types and I think they tried to do that with backgrounds and they've kind of kept that in fifth edition as well backgrounds and uh, lots of different races to choose from but I, I would still like to see like gladiators and uh, sword mages and all sorts of things like that that you just don't really see anymore uh, to provide more variety but uh, I'm sure you could homeschool it if you really wanted to. So yeah, I don't really dislike 5th edition, but it just doesn't feel that amazingly different than from 3rd to me. We'll see how everything works out, because I am soon hoping to run a Pathfinder campaign, and I'm going to pull a decent amount of rules in from 4th and 5th edition. I'll say that 5th edition I absolutely love, advantage and disadvantage. I can't remember if that was the same in 4th edition or not. That might be a holdover from there. And I 100% love the way that they have simplified the movement rules. That just seems so straightforward now. Because it's like, oh my god, can I get my sword out this round? Or do I have to wait until next round to actually use it? And yada, 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 yada. It's like, no, like just do stuff. We want you to be doing stuff in the game that you're playing for fun. That seems much more interesting to me. That seems well-planned. I don't think there's anything bad about 5th. It just feels too much like 3rd cleaned up a little bit to me. It feels like what 3.75 should have been before moving to 4th. Also, I just really like 4th because Dark Sun is it, and as a huge Dark Sun fan, I'll take what I can get. For now, this is Michael T. Bradley, Realms Remembered.